Many birds spend their summer in one place and the winter in another, routinely travelling the long distances between them. These can range from relatively short distances, perhaps only moving one country over, to some extremes like the Arctic Tern, which migrates from pole to pole so they can enjoy Arctic summers throughout the year. Humans back in the day did not have the ability to track or follow birds over these vast distances. And for the longest time, people did not even believe birds were capable of migration. Thus, a variety of explanations were thought up to explain why certain birds disappeared for part of the year, some of which were more wacky than the others. In this series, I will go over all the different theories that were believed throughout the ages. We'll talk about such things like birds transforming into other things, hibernating at the bottom of lakes, and a tree that grows barnacles which, if they fall in the water, turn into geese. These old theories persisted for a very long time, and there was reasoning behind it, and I'll explain why people believe these things as we go from theory to theory. Apart from all the nonsensical ideas, I will also talk about migration itself, because we didn't figure out what happened all at once. As migration was studied, we did make some mistakes along the way. Because believing birds migrate is one thing, but figuring out where they actually go is a whole other topic for debate. Some people believe they could just fly to warmer climates, but others suggest that they might as well migrate to the moon. It wasn't until the turn of the 20th century that bird migration became universally accepted within the scientific community. So what did people think happened to these birds, and why did it take so long to figure out what was actually going on? That's all topics you can look forward to in future videos. For now we'll focus on the transformation theory. In medieval Europe, the notion that birds could travel and navigate over such long distances sounded ridiculous to the people of those times. Instead, they believed in more reasonable theories, like birds just hid away and hibernated in a hole somewhere, or of course birds could always transmutate into other things. To the average medieval person this all made perfect sense. When winter approaches, they saw the number of birds outside decline, and at the same time, more and more mice would come into their homes to seek the warmth. Thus, birds must be turning into mice, so they can get into the buildings and overwinter there. There were also other, more believable cases of transformation, as some bird species migrate southwards to overwinter in warmer climes, likewise birds that usually live further north might move down to the first birds' summer residence to overwinter there. This means that as some bird species disappeared in the colder months, others appeared, and thus if you had no knowledge of migration, it would be reasonable to assume that these two species might just be the same birds, changing their appearance throughout the seasons. Subscribe and hit the bell notification to get notified when I post new videos. My next video will be about the Barnacle Goose. I'd like to thank my patrons and channel members for their support, especially my $25 patron G. David.